Hello everyone, uh, this is a little uh, video I've made for you to help you with the uh, project number one in MFSS 5020 uh, to define your bioregion. And uh, I'm going to show you a bunch of pictures I used uh, when I was faced with this project myself and trying to define my own bioregion, which is at the confluence of the Shenandoah and Potomac Rivers at the extreme eastern tip of West Virginia in the Mid-Atlantic U.S. First look at this uh, level three and four ecoregion EPA map showing the entire eastern United States. You'll see where I'm located right just a little bit to the right of the center of the image where the green meets the sort of salmon colored at the tip of the political boundary of West Virginia. Looking at this you see that there are large scale geologic and, and uh, uh, morphological features that uh, I have to consider when I define my bioregion. Uh, looking at another USGS uh, mapping, we see that uh, there are a number of uh, areas that are defined differently. You'll see my area is actually the little gray area, not on the legend, that is independently marked the Shenandoah Valley. This gives me a sort of clue as to how I might want to define my bioregion. The next slide that we'll see goes in a little bit closer and looks just at the Shenandoah Valley. If you look at the upper right, you'll see a town called Harper's Ferry in the eastern panhandle of West Virginia. That's where I live. And you'll see that south of there, there's another town of Front Royal, which is at the northern end of what is called Massanutten Mountain. In the end, after all of this process, I decided to find my bioregion as the Shenandoah Valley from Front Royal to Harper's Ferry and the rest of the gray area up to the west of that. There are a number of ways I could have decided to do this. Uh, one was by looking at the Chesapeake Bay, which is the major feature of the Mid-Atlantic, the largest estuary in the U.S., and an enormous source of information that I could use to help find my bioregion by tapping into the resources of the Chesapeake Bay program, which is a combination pi private and public program that provides an enormous amount of information about this region. And many people would say that the Chesapeake Bay itself would be the bioregion. And when you look at this next slide of the, of the watershed physiography, you can see the Great Valley where we are. You can still see the, the outlines of the tip of West Virginia where I am. You'll see I'm right at the edge of the Great Valley with the Blue Ridge to the east and the Appalachian Mountains to the west. Uh, these are big, big things that make a difference in our area. And I'm sure in your area you would see similar kinds of changes on maps of this type. Now look at the tributaries of the Chesapeake Bay. You'll see that they're broken up in a number of different ways, and the brown that represents West Virginia is entirely considered to be the Potomac uh, watershed because the Shenandoah uh, technically is considered a tributary of the Potomac. So this is another way to look at it. Uh, some of you are a little farther north and east in the Mid-Atlantic. You can see your own watersheds in here. Those of you in the west, I'm sure you can find similar kinds of situations. Notice also in this next slide that we have the watersheds classified by, you know, what types of land uses they have and what types of, of uh, habitats are on them. And we know that habitats are an important part of helping us define our bioregion, so uh, this is a very useful map. Uh, remember that the key with all of this is that we are trying to make sure that we um, have as many different ways of looking at our bioregion as possible so that we can overlay these different interpretive maps. This next one is the hydrologic units. Uh, so we have as many different ways of looking at the possible boundaries of our bioregion and then we can uh, come to our own definition of which elements are important to that. And that puts us in a position to start working on our deep history and eventually on our food shed issues. Uh, the next one, notice this, com this combines uh, hydrographic and geomorphic uh, characteristics, and you'll see that it has a lot in common with slide one, with the whole area there in the center that's purple, and this one uh, showing the large-scale geographic structures that were caused by the receding of the oceans, uh, I think, uh, 200, 250 million years ago. Uh, I'd have to look at my own paper. But these are the kinds of things you'll be dealing with, and so a map like this is very useful. Here's one now showing uh, current land cover. Uh, land cover matters a lot because, uh, you know, if you're going to be producing food and you're in 
in a deep forest, this is going to be an issue, just like if you are trying to produce food and you're in a geologic uh, formation that doesn't have much soil, well, then you're going to have a problem. So, the, you know, you want to look at as many of these maps as possible. I've chosen primarily the ones from the Chesapeake Bay Foundation just to show uh, an example to you. Notice here we have a different thing, the Omernik ecoregions. These ecoregions, now I'm part of a much larger region. You can see that's there in sort of a teal color. Uh, I'm right at the edge of it because that, that darker color to the east is the Blue Ridge Mountains, and the Blue Ridge Mountains are a, uh, a very important uh, geographical distinction in our area because the weather often stays to the east of the, uh, of the Blue Ridge if it's coming from the ocean and to the west of the Blue Ridge if it's coming from the west. And look at this picture of the air shed. The air shed itself is larger than almost anything we've seen except the EPA ecoregions. And the air shed makes a difference because the air shed really not only does it, uh, you know, figure into pollution questions, but it also represents uh, an area that weather systems have to move through and that weather systems interact with. And so that's an important part of defining what characteristics define our space. Uh, and, of course, as we know, we're supposed to consider cultural aspects as well. Uh, the Chesapeake Bay program has a very nice uh, set of data on uh, cultural aspects. And when we get further into the deep history, of course, we're going to want to be talking about uh, the uh, human history in the area, as well as the, the uh, flora, the fauna, the geology, the hydrology, all of those things. We're also going to want to talk about the human history. And just for that, I'll th throw one slide in here. Uh, you'll see that at the top of Virginia's map, uh, that little hook there is the county that I live in. Uh, it, of course, is not covered in the Virginia data. West Virginia doesn't have much data. We're sort of in a black hole. And you may find yourself in a data black hole as well. And what you need to do is to try and assemble data from the regions around you and hope that there's enough overlap so that you can really catch the need to do what you're doing. So I hope this has been a bit of a help in letting you see the kinds of data that you want to consider and how you're going to put together your first bioregional definition and then eventually your deep history and your food system issues. Thanks again. Bye.